Yeah, yeah. Live from the El Paso studios, it's the Wazi Circus Radio. My guest tonight, Jesse Tex Leos. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. Listen, <laughs> listen, not a game, not a game. We used to work together in Austin as instructors, and then mm-hmm. he went to the sky in Houston. You went to the tunnel in Houston, and then your video started coming out. Mm. And I started stealing everything you did, <laughs> Doug. And then you, you mentioned what you were going to do when we were jumping at San Marcos. You had a vision of being a tunnel instructor and a skydive instructor, and you wanted to travel and teach skydiving. Yeah, I think I had a pretty clear vision of what I wanted to do from the very beginning. Which reminds me, can I just start off with a little story here? Yes. Do you remember me shooting video for you uh, when you were doing a tandem? No. <laughs> I do Let's not. just say I didn't have enough jumps to be doing this. <laughs> okay. uh, one, one could say, you know. Uh, and uh, I just remember you showed up at the drop zone when it was still jumping at uh, in Lexington. Uh, look at the jersey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, the look on your face when, uh, when I asked if I could come, you were like, Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> how did it, how did it go? It went well, but I think uh, I think your briefing was something like, "If you get anywhere close to me, I'm throwing the drogue right in your face or something." <laughs> so I was like, "All right, fair." <laughs> uh, no, 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 it was great. I'm sure my video looked like two little dots right. flying around, and I'm thinking, "I'm killing it." Oh, that's dope. So we have skydive oh, together. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. And we were on that. Uh, what was it like a twelve-way sequential or something yeah, record no, we were in a couple San jumps. Marcus? Yeah. yeah, we were on a couple jumps. Mm-hmm. We were on Ryan Risberg's ass jump. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, we were yeah. on a couple jumps. I mean, but like back in the you day. were on my two hundred skydive. Oh, I, I still got, got, got a painting, painting of, of it. it. Yeah. yeah, dude, we've got a little history. Here. Absolutely, Fucking brother. Rad. It time goes fast. Dude. It goes so fast, man. Holy fuck. Man. Talking to you, just seeing you at the tunnel, just it's uh, it's like a time warp, man. Isn't it? Yeah, dude, I've never left. I, I, fucking weird it, yeah but i mean you're doing great man i'm having fun yeah That's you're, why at, I haven't you're in a good place right now yeah you're in a yeah. really good place for tunnel flying it's pretty nice mm-hmm. dude the best coaches the best coaches and all i get to do is absorb it yeah it's pretty it's pretty wild coming in here and just seeing the list of camps you'll have week yeah. after week it's it's really really cool and um it's great that you and the staff too here seem to really understand uh, how special that is because that's yeah. that's not always the case to see some of these european coaches here in the states in general is pretty yeah. pretty wild because even enjoying if you, themselves you can definitely see the shift in the industry right now you know where mm-hmm. whereas i believe in the in the past flyers went to the coaches uh mm-hmm. in the tunnel world right. and i think now because of the oversaturation of the the tunnel world in uh in europe mm-hmm. and some of those tunnels not doing so well um, as well as the recession hitting really hard. Now you see more of the coaches going to the flyers. And right. so now we're seeing, we're seeing coaches visit, you know, often here in the States and things like that. And that is, that's great for everybody. That's great for the, great for the flyers for sure. And the shift has become, is because of the recession. I think because... that's, I think that's part of it. And I think that also, you know, uh, you look at places like your or Europe, mm-hmm. um, where most of the big camps were, were held for a while. And I mean, there's a tunnel, uh, you know, a couple tunnels in every country, it seems like. And a lot of those countries are, you know, you, you can, you can cross it in a, in a couple hours. Right. So why would you take a week off to go to Warsaw or something like right. that when you can hit your tunnel, your local tunnel? So then it became that there were kind of like the local coaches, it seemed like at each, each tunnel. Right. And, uh, and so those tunnel, those, in, those coaches never really left the they flyers. Didn't they didn't have to. So the flyers right. went to them. But now I think uh, with the increase in prices of tunnels and mm-hmm. and uh, the oversaturation of the market, now you see a lot of the coaches going to places and hosting these camps. And y'all are uh, y'all are the spot right You're here in El Paso, spot. right here in the United States, which um, is really and, really cool. And Paraclete does a lot. Of the, Paraclete the does a lot. Guys. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. I'm glad we got it. If yeah. If not, it's gone. Yeah. Keep uh pr- protect it. Yeah. Keep... Um. Do you do some European coaching too? Don't you? In the tunnel? Yeah. Yeah, I've done uh, camps over there. Yeah, all the time. Every time, last time I talk to you, you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to fucking somewhere. Like, you're always <laughs> going somewhere. The the past few years hasn't been so much. Uh, it's been more, like, for instance, this is Sweden. Uh-huh. Um, most of the the European trips have been about uh, skydiving and not so much tunnel. But, uh, yeah, in the past, I was I was mixing both uh a little bit more. Look how fucking clean you are in the sky, dude. <laughs> this Jesus is uh Christ. this is this is Angle Week uh from last year and this was a real real privilege to uh to 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 work at uh much less just be at. This is an event that I've really always wanted to attend. So it was it was it was really special to finally cross that one off my list. 
And you were organizing or just flying? Yeah, I was one of the coaches. Oh, that's fucking crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it was beautiful. Now, you got so much high level, so many high level thoughts and things going on in your head. Do you just lack the skill in flyers? Are there enough flyers to do what you want to do? Or Uh, are you like always just short of what you want to do? Because I've been on some of your jumps and they were fucking cutting edge mm, six years ago. Thanks, man. Right? Um, Yeah, I I see where you're going with that question. I think that that, uh, yes, I, I suppose to push it, you know, to to really explore some ideas, you're definitely going to require high level uh, skydivers. Um, and I, I'm lucky enough that where I'm based at, uh, at a Spaceland Houston, fucking mega. There's, yeah, there's quite a crew there that we we get to experiment, and and they're happy to be my guinea pigs when uh, we're trying to work ideas out and things like that. However, I I try and make sure that in order to not get burned out, because if that's my only mentality is I need really good people around me to to do really cool things, well, I'm going to get burned out pretty quickly. Right. And uh, and so I think that the real challenge to me is to take those ideas that maybe I feel like are innovative or a little bit different and have novice intermediate level flyers flying those sort of lines in a more controlled fashion. So if I, if okay. I can take these high level ideas and, and teach them even to, you know, the intermediate level flyers, then I'm really onto something. So I, I have to be able to enjoy both. I, right. I, and I, and I definitely do in my coaching. Well, isn't that's the better part is the intermediate flyers, right? Like the you light get, bulbs coming on left and right. Absolutely. I mean, you definitely get to mold them a lot more right. than the, the flyers that have, have reached a certain point where the, yeah, they're just there to do something cool for the day and leave where everybody else is tr- reaching for it. Yeah. I think that they're, you know, luckily again in Houston, I mean, this is a gentleman right here, Mark, who's, you know, charging really hard, obviously super high skill level. Um, there definitely are those high level flyers that Mark are who? still, this is Mark Wallace. That's Wallace? From, yeah, from Houston, yeah, I yeah. Know Mark. That are still, uh, you know, have that, uh, have that edge to, to their training and, and their yeah, focus. Mark. We um, just did but FRTP they are harder, harder to find, uh, as you go along. Right. Oh yeah. No, he's a rare breed, dude. Mm-hmm. That dude is so driven. Yeah. There's a lot of guys like this in Houston that, that have the, the real training and athletic mindset towards getting better. And obviously I resonate with that so much as a coach. Um, and most of my... Most of my students, luckily these days uh, in the sky, uh, are people that are that I'm working with um, for quite a long time. So we're really seeing these processes all the way through, and less of these kind of hit and run uh, right. coaching interactions. You've got the community built, yeah. and the damn, that's what dude. It takes years to get that. It shit. takes years, absolutely, and uh, and it's a lot of credit to these uh, these individuals too. I mean, these exactly. they they work really really hard. This is my one of my really really close friends, uh, Troy. From Canada, okay, and he was uh, he was with us last yeah, year at right, right. Uh, at an event we host in in Houston called Keep It Tropical. So, guys, Tropical Space Camp for people that are listening, we're watching a thirty minute long just montage video of tech shredding the skies all <laughs> over the world, and these are just some high level jumps. These are the jumps you dream about, man. He's leading them. Hey, one jump we did, I can't get out of my fucking head. I can't believe we were doing it in the sky for one. I don't know what we did to get there, but we like did a shuffler or something, and then we built an open accordion, mm-hmm. and then we all turned one direction off the open accordion, and then we sh- we went in face between them, like ah uh, yeah, and like the zipper. Yep, I couldn't believe I was part of this shit, man. <laughs> and we were going between each other. I was like, "This is in the sky." Totally. Oh my god, yeah. I can't imagine what you're doing now. Are you doing still doing shit like that, or is it just movement now? I think uh, you know. It goes through phases. Do you remember uh, what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely, um, yeah, you're talking about a more, you know, I think at the time they were calling them like skydamic jumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> kind of makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit. Um, but basically they were they were angle jumps with free fly elements yeah, to it. Yeah, with and, BFS uh, mixed in. Yeah, and, and certainly I still enjoy those kind of skydives. I think if I had a style, it definitely would lean more towards – big lines and taking up a lot of space in the sky. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's typically what I, what I go towards more than the, the kind of tunnel esque sort of moves. Right. Um, right. The which, confinement. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's really about stretching out and seeing how much space you can take up and really exploring, uh, pitch changes and, and things like that. Yo, one of my, uh, favorite jumps to teach that I stole directly from your playbook. Um, I think it starts as an open accordion and it's so simple belly open accordion mm-hmm. center flyer flies through the lead and he goes right. his back and the other two just t- wait no wait, what is it 
Yeah, one, one wait, of the wait, wait. one of the groups is either going to do a U turn uh-huh. or the other group's going to go through go to their a barrel roll and and yeah. It looks fucking crazy. It, it, it look, looks it, crazy, but it's the simplest thing you've course, ever done, dude. Of course, it's just a one eighty. Yeah, and other people just go to their back. Isn't that it? Yeah, absolutely. and then they're just on your shoulders, and you just move yeah. from there. Yeah, it's it a really nice way up. of yeah. It's a nice way, especially for for lower level skill groups, to yeah. just make sure that they start tight. You yep. know, uh, it, it starts the, the, the movement, uh, with everybody really in close proximity right there. And if somebody pops out or something, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to handle and, and keep them in the jump. Um, I can't say that I created that jump. That oh, jump really? has been around for, for a long, long okay. time. Okay. Um, so I'm sure I, I ripped that one off of somebody. Well, as, thank you for as, sharing as, as you do, room, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause I took that and I was taking it to where I would just like open and just do a belly to back transition Perfect. and have them on my feet just to go. And Beautiful. it's just, just. It's just setting everybody else up like a chessboard mm-hmm. for the next step. You can even do that going into head up jumps, right? Right. You could have them doing a, a belly to back transition and starting right. and, and having them work on kind of slow speed head up jumps from this more static position. Slow speed into the sky. Yeah, it's, that's, it's fucking happening, isn't it? It is. Absolutely. I, I, I haven't jumped in like three months, four months. And the jumps I've done before that were just solos or some, you know, I need to get the, I need to come with you, man. Yeah, man. Take these, uh, take these tunnel skills and, and, uh, really go explore the sky with them. Especially um, that slow, just the smooth transitions, the side carves. Oh it's, my God. Yeah. And you just really feel the pressure changes, um, in the sky and it's, yeah, it's, it's really great. And it's really cool that we're getting to a point now where so many of these groups can, uh, can fly it so well too. So now, now you're really getting to explore some of these ideas that seem pretty far fetched even just a few years ago. And I was always terrified to jump with two or three people on just VFS jumps. Sure. And then you add movement in, and it's yeah. like, holy shit. And you're doing six sevens. Like, yeah. I, I don't trust people like that, personally. I get it. Yeah. And you probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, got enough, I got enough examples to tell you and show you why, why maybe you shouldn't. Oh, but, sure. but at the same time, you know, this is, uh, this is where it matters so much um, yeah. on the, uh, the level of the, the, the coaching and mm-hmm. then the skill level of the group and that it makes sense. And, you know, as you go along and as you're a part of this, this particular style of flying, this community, um, you create, you know, quite a discerning eye for yourself where you're going to have a feeling on these skydives of what, what works, what likely doesn't work, who to trust, who not to trust, who gives you a funny feeling. And, uh, and over time you're able to really articulate why. Cause like my next question is, um, camps, a lot of people are showing up, a lot of egos in our sport. A lot sure. of people have a lot of faith in themselves. It's like misplaced. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. And they'll lie to you like a motherfucker mm-hmm. how good they are, who yeah. they know, what they've done. Yeah. Way worse than anything else I've seen. Well, I mean, think of it this way from a coaching perspective and when you're working with the when you're working with these groups, you should consider and uh and the coach should consider it's always easier to build a jump up than it is to build a jump down. So when I'm dealing with big egos and, and things like that in a group, it's it's quite simple. It's well, well show me show me that you can do these these simple lines well and then we can add to that as the day goes on and we can get more creative and, and more complex with the with the plans. But you know, if if me just going pretty fast and a little bit of a pitch change and something like that, you can't fly on level, well, you know, Your I don't, I don't, don't matter. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't doesn't that doesn't apply. So the first couple jumps kind of testers yeah if depending you don't on, know the group if i don't know the group right, then absolutely right. it's a bit of a diagnostic jump you know it's uh um over time with it with experience you can kind of have a good uh a, a pretty good anticipation for how certain jumps are going to go but yeah absolutely you should feel everybody out because you know just like any sport some days people have good days some people you know are just a little bit off that day too so you know early on in the morning is a great way to kind of feel out the group and see if this particular group they may all be great flyers but do they fly well together do you have outside video on your jumps for debrief or are you using your 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 setup i mean if we have outside video if it's if it's uh someone that i trust on outside video because that's a whole nother variable right um then that's always great um but But uh it's hard to come by yeah uh, exactly most of my my private coaching days uh it's pretty hard to come by outside video but uh for for camps and things like that what explain to me what we're looking at explain to me what we're looking at we're looking at Pepe's Island Boogie from last year and I'll be going back here Ooh, was um, that a 450 yeah yeah probably um I'll be going back here in oh. three three or four weeks turquoise blue water people yeah, it's, Sandy beautiful. Beach. It's, in, oh. uh, it's in Panama and it's a uh 
really probably one of the best, if not the best beach boogie in the world. I, I just, I really can't imagine places more beautiful than that. And then on top of that, the amount of jumps you can do there is crazy because it's such a small island that, I mean, you're walking distance from your hotel room to the packing room, from the packing room floor to the airplane. I mean, last year I was, you know, even on the days where I wasn't hitting it hard, I was organizing jumps there. I was doing 10 jumps a day. Not so, I mean, uh, really. you know, and there's just no beach boogies where you can go to and, and smash out jumps like that if you really, uh, if you really wanted to. So, it, where is it again? What was it? Pe uh, it's Pepe's Island Boogie and it's in Panama. It's, how, do, uh, how do people find it's it? How little, do people, is it, it on Facebook? It's, okay. uh, I think it's currently sold out. It sells out I'm super sure. quick every year, but, um, uh, it'll be happening in a few weeks and then I'm sure registration will open, in a, in a month or so. Oh, that's fucking dope. It's a, uh, it's a really, really, I'm really looking forward to that one. So where's your favorite place you've organized? Oh gosh! I mean, every place. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love it. Man. Every every place has uh has something really special about it. I mean, like for instance, this place that we're looking at right now, to land. I mean, uh -huh. to me, this event, uh, flight camp, is just represented the greatest uh you know event in the world for this style of flying for for years and years and even at the present moment uh just the level of uh the level of coaches how innovative it's been how influential it's been for for the sport and for this discipline in particular is really really special to me so even though it's maybe not the most beautiful place in the world uh or the most you know uh modern drop zone or anything land, though, yeah. it's it just has you're just there and it has something special about it because you you really feel a piece of uh, like, you you feel that this is the place that had the biggest, most influential role in the evolution of this style of flying, and you're there, you're there. and you're still pushing it a little bit. So it's a really special place to me. When is that camp? Um, that is every spring and fall. And then here we're looking at my favorite drops That's in the world. <laughs> there, baby. That's my favorite it, pond in yeah. the world. And this is me falling Alethea in on your canopy. Dude, my and... first time ever hitting that pond and dragging water. Uh -huh. I got that moss on my shoe. Oh, yeah. Never fucking washed that shoe. Dude. <laughs> I put another 400 jumps on those shoes. Beautiful. Never washed those Beautiful. shoes. Dog. That's pond scum, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's it. God, I love, dude. There's nothing like Spaceland in it, the country. Yeah, I, man. It for me, it really is uh, the premier drop zone in the United States. If Skydive not the world. Chicago, Skydive Chicago, great place. Um, it's just the weather isn't year round. Yeah, it's not year round, and you know, if for me, uh, there, I mean, their summer, their their community is much more visiting jumpers and and things like that. Well, whereas, Sharon is residential. Where, yeah, whereas whereas Houston it has a, just such a strong strong local base particularly for this style of flying that you know i i love the most and i spend the most time coaching too so right uh definitely scott of chicago is going to have you know sdc core and you know uh lots of uh team training and stuff like that and if that's your jam then then that's definitely yeah. gonna be a special place for you that was a sick exit <laughs> yeah these boys are are really really on it man i have never had a bad time in Rochelle, bro even on a rainy day i agree you know what i mean yeah. I agree. And they just got airplanes it's, everywhere. If you're just, an airplane fan, it's... it just feels like a training facility, you know? And that's what really, you know, for me, that's what attracts me the most about skydiving is I still get to I still get to have an athlete's mindset like I did when I was playing sports. And rugby. Like you're a rugby, right? I played, uh, yeah, I played soccer in college. And then afterwards, I went to Australia, moved there and played Australian rules football, which is um, similar to rugby in the sense it's it's all, it's a full contact sport. Um uh, but it is uh, with no pads and things like that. It's but hardcore. It, it definitely has different different rules to to rugby. It's a lot more a uh, lot more kicking the ball and things like that. Okay, bigger field. I um, just remember you were fucking tough and you did something with a ball. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> I was coming right off of living yeah, in were. Australia when you when, were we, when we met and, and yeah, and I started working up the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Man. I went through FITP with a broken finger from. Oh, fuck. Uh, I broke my finger in training like two nights before FITP started, and I was like. Oh my God, I'm going to have to work an office job because I'm not going to get the job. Right, right. And I just showed up to FITP with my fingers just taped to the max and just pushed through for those few weeks of catching spots with a broken finger. And that was old school spots. You were in the old oh, school, yeah, not man, the new school. Finger still doesn't like fully extend. Yeah. You, you know, my, yeah. <laughs> did you, you did it in Austin? Yeah. Yeah. With us. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I would have started there like probably. I think it was like nine or ten months after you uh, yeah, you yeah, op yeah. opened it. Man, we had fun. Oh days. yeah, we do. With Timmy and oh god, and Drew and <laughs> oh dude, Drew's still there. Drew was on the show. Yeah, fucking man. Uh, remember you caught the baby? Yeah, 
<laughs> that just showed up in my Facebook memories Did the it? other day. Yeah, I wonder if we can find that. So there's, there's a uh, there's security camera footage. Some parents put their kid on the counter and Texas just standing there. And the baby backflips off the counter <laughs> and he fucking spots the kid like an instructor, puts him back on the counter and just stands there. <laughs> wow, that video just uh, grew legs overnight. It was crazy. Yeah, I, that I, was straight viral. Dude. Yeah, I posted it on my Facebook and one of my friends had the, I guess, foresight or uh, to, to, to copy it, put it on Reddit. And the next morning he texts me and he says, hey, you know you're number one on Reddit, right? Oh, and I, I have no idea what that even means. Right. I'm like, you know... I, I just honestly, I'm like, okay, cool. And then went about my day. I was at the drop zone and then people started informing me like, no, this is ca- like. You're a fucking hero. I'm like, what is going on? And then the manager of iFly called me and was like, when are you coming into work? And I'm like, when I'm supposed to come in at 5 p.m. or something. Right. And he goes, well, there's a bunch of news crews <laughs> here <laughs> outside that want to talk to you. They say they want to talk to the hero. He has no idea what's going on, so he's confused, and he's just like, right. what the hell did you do? Right. He immediately jumped into like, oh, you no. know, you did something wrong for he's, sure. He's like, I'm going to lose my job yeah, over totally. what this instructor <laughs> did. <laughs> oh, the first few hours, I was stressed. I was like, I'm going to lose my job, you know? Oh, oh my man. God. It was a whole thing, but... uh yeah, it, it it ended up iFly ended up uh embracing the free marketing. Right. And um it was a pretty funny few days. Quite a whirlwind of uh of media uh, <laughs> spots and things like that. Do you remember butt butt butt? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> I, and I'm not sure how to explain that to the audience. Either. I don't think we're going to. <laughs> I don't think we're going to, but holy shit, we had fun. Dude. Yeah, we was pretty. Uh, yeah, I think I was pretty lucky to make it through the first first year or so of working there because uh, we were we were pushing the limits for. <laughs> uh, oh we were, we were having a good God. time though. I I do believe we were passing it on to the the customers though. You know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We were, we were having. Right, a good we time. would dare each other to say shit uh-huh. like in your class. I, you won't. You won't fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think it started with like say meow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, like drop like, a meow. meow. Right, yeah. And then it just got deep <laughs> with it. It got dark. Man. And then you went to Houston to help open up those badass tunnels. Yeah. And that's um, how you got to Sharon. Yeah, I was just lucky enough that one day I was I was teaching a class there in Austin and uh Jason Hyder, who mm-hmm. was the uh the general manager the of Spaceland yeah. uh at the time, was in the class and I had no idea. Just a nice guy with his uh, with his son flying there, and um, flew him. Kind of started chatting after the after the class was over. Found out he was a GM. Thought, man, this is a great cool guy. Yeah, yeah. See him in the tunnel a few weeks later, and he just applied, or he just uh, just got the job for yeah. to be the general manager of the Houston tunnel, so. and he was going to go from Spaceland to to work at the iFly tunnel. Remember and that? Just the impression I got off of him made me really want to work for him, uh-huh. and I knew I wanted to take a, a a bigger step in my skydiving, and I knew that Skydive Spaceland was, was gonna, right there was the was the place in Texas to to take that leap. So it was definitely a leap of faith to to go there, and uh, certainly I'm I'm super glad I did, and I'm super glad that. Uh, just happened to have Jason Hyder in my in my class that day. Oh, dude, so lo- right? Isn't that crazy how fate goes? It's dude? it's pretty pretty wild, really. Like uh, you know, I'm sure this goes for everyone's life story, but but definitely my career. I I just can I can pinpoint so many pivotal moments or or people that I've met yeah. along the way that I, I you know maybe I would have gotten to to do what I what I wanted to do and what I'm doing at the moment and things like that at some point, but I. I struggle to see how I would do that right. had I not met, you know, that Hyder individual, had I not met the Ryan Risbergs, you know, right. how it, peace, the, 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 the fly for life boys and, and things like that, you know, how, you know, Mr. Boyd at, at Skydive Spaceland, you know, shout out uh, to the Boyd family. Yeah. Nick Lott, people like that. Nick, you Yeah, know, man. If, if I don't come across stars. those, those individuals and, you know, those friendships are made and, um, yeah, I, I it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild how influential people can be on your your path. And now you're tunnel sky canopy coaching, just fucking out there killing it <laughs> constantly. So when you're not having a camp, you're leading some group at a boogie. If you're not doing that, you're doing private. It's the dream, yeah, fucking and- life. And I saw it when you were leaving. I knew it. I was like, 
those Houston guys are about to kill. <laughs> you remember JDF and that whole crew, Constantine? Yeah, absolutely. All of them used to come up to Austin. Yeah. And they were high level then. Sure. And I was like, when we when I knew we were going to lose them, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, and then you were going with them. Like, mm -hmm. everybody was leaving Austin at that point. And I was just watching you guys walk away to skydive greatness because I knew it, man. And then they took it to the fucking max and they did kind of dissipated mm -hmm. and then you guys rose with the new level of because they, they were more vfs stuff yeah. yeah yeah and then the angles came in yeah you know when i got to spaceland vertical flying and and vfs and sequentials and things like that was uh was definitely the the biggest most popular discipline um which makes sense i mean it was for for the time anyhow but um you know with the influence of the tunnel and the dynamic flying, uh, you know, slowly that, that culture started to change there. And uh, um, I still love that style of flying. Um, we got to do Live Bigs again this year. Uh, oh, did which you? Was, which was really fun. And I hadn't hadn't done a lot of vertical or sequential flying um, since the last one, or perhaps even since the last uh, world record attempts. So that was a, that was a blast. But uh, definitely the predominant discipline at the moment is, is definitely angle flying. And so... You know, like you said, uh, these days, my uh, if I'm not doing the private coaching or I'm not coaching at events, I have also uh, started a company recently uh, for for consulting. Uh huh. So I've been helping drop zones create a safer environment, Sweet. Um, particularly for movement skydives. Okay. So kind of educating drop zones on what they can do to create a more uh, a, a safer community, um, well, particularly good, for good. movement jumps. Because you said you said something earlier in the conversation that I really want to hit on. You're like, I like to use all of the sky or more of the sky. Mm -hmm. That means you, I mean, and you know, when you're in the jump, you want every drop. You can forget where you are in space and time if you did yeah. it doesn't go off. Definitely. And if you're moving at high levels, mm -hmm. you could be in another fucking county. Absolutely. Right? Or or up the jump run and all that yeah, stuff. Definitely. So, And as this becomes more popular, like, it's almost a secret it's almost a secret, man. How do you get access to the information? I'm glad you started a company because how do you find this shit? In an article in the parachutist, maybe. And right. if you fuck up the jump or you lead it wrong, you don't know you're going to get cussed out by the DZM. Sure. But who, there's no, like, there's nobody teaching this shit. There's a few people teaching, I mean, including myself. Uh, well, but, yeah, okay. But yeah, yeah right. there's, you have you know, to go to a camp and, and yeah, sit down. You got to go search yeah, it out. You I can't mean, at, at watch the, a video. At the moment, you know, I feel like the skill level is, is outpacing. The skill level and the popularity is, is outpacing the education. Right. For sure. Easily. Um, so there's, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm an instructor for the leading workshop, uh -huh. um, which is uh, run uh, fa created by Modern Skydiving Concepts, which is Luis Pernetto and Sharon, Sweet. who also co the course um there's a lot to be learned from attending camps and, and getting coaching and things like that from from the high level coaches that are out there but i'm with you you know it's the popularity is is really outpacing the education and i think one of the other problems is is, is watching these videos is really great and I, I i love that people are aspiring to to fly the lines that they're they're watching in some of these videos how having said that you know one of the issues is i think that they start to take for granted what is quote unquote advanced uh, now because now they're seeing such high level flying that they're they're not appreciating that even uh, intermediate level flying quote unquote is extremely difficult to do right. well and extremely difficult to accomplish safely. So you know you've got these these tunnel kids that can rip around and fly head up and all this stuff and then they start leading skydives and they they don't. They don't understand that, you know, throwing a couple layouts into a jump and then a carve and then a track into a, you know, a pass through or something like that is not an easy thing to navigate, you know, and then they're doing it with multiple moving groups in the sky. And, and it's, they're just becoming so accustomed to seeing really, really high level leading and really high level skydiving that they're taking for granted uh, mm -hmm. how difficult it is to just accomplish the basic you know, goals of a, of a movement skydive, which is get off the line of flight, get out of other people's right. airspace, open where you said you were going to open, make it back to the drop zone. Right. You know, th th those are, that's the primary goal of a, of a movement jump. And that gets really difficult when you start to throw in all these different elements and how fast and uh, uh, quickly these jumps are moving. And if you don't plan it out before you get on the plane. Yeah. You're just kind of winging it. We're going to go, we're going to turn off the line of flight. That's all guys say. Oh, we're going to turn left off the line of flight. Yeah. Nothing else. Right. No landmarks, no like directional changes. Definitely. 
And those are, you know, we talked earlier in the podcast about the discerning eye of who to trust and who not to trust. Right. That's an instant right there where, you know, even as a follower on the jump, you should be going, that doesn't quite do it for me. That doesn't sound enough like you're, you're navigating or you have right. any, you know, you have any idea right. which, uh, which, uh, you know, which way you're going to go and how you're going to get there and all, all these sort of things. And there's so much nuance that goes into leading that, you know, you can get a, you can get a pretty in, a good intuition towards whether someone are, has uh, has a grip on what's, on, hat, what's going exactly. on. Right, right. Exactly. There's a chasm between that and reality, right? You're talking about they don't appreciate because they're, they're seeing the high level, but they're, they're not seeing the before. Sure. No, there's none of that out there. Sure. Let me, let me give you the example of just from teaching the leading workshop. One of the things we'll do is we, we do practice jumps. And in those practice jumps, we have the leader before the jump draw out their flight path, mm -hmm. their anticipated flight path. Then they get down and they draw out what they actually you know, did. Yeah. And, or what they think they actually did. And then we look at the GPS and see. Uh -huh. And, and you, you can imagine the discrepancy between, right. between the three, right? Right. And that's for a very – that's for a very basic jump in a very controlled environment after days of, of working on it and talking about mm. it. So you can imagine how difficult it is now when you start to add in, you know, head up components and, and mm. carving and, and, and layouts spots. and giant pitch changes and, and right. you know, varying spots and then different weather conditions and then multiple moving groups on the airplane. And I, you oh, know, it, and so people, people start to take it for granted that, you know, because maybe they can fly, a certain way they they have a they have a good skill level of flying that that somehow translates into a really big awareness in the sky and navigation ability yeah, and yeah. timing and all the things that really really take experience um so that's you know that's a bit of my crusade uh, in the education department uh for for this sort of uh this sort of flying because it i love this style of flying but i also you know i want to make sure that that people are doing it in a safe way and that we're, right. we're developing a, you know, a common terminology, if you will, out Sick. there. So that yeah. helps with the, the intuition feeling of when someone starts to say something that you're just like, well, what? What? <laughs> that's not how we that, talk. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's just a little bit out of line for, <laughs> right. you know, uh, so I don't, I don't want it to become this like super highly regulated thing, but at the same time, no, I mean, there's a, a similar you know, page. Yeah. We're at the point now where we've, we've kind of figured out, how to do some of these things really well and how to do them as safely as possible because there's already enough risk to it anyways. Right. Um, so when you see people that are still, you know, lagging behind on those things because they're either ignorant or they don't want to to keep up with, uh, you know, these kind of modern skydiving skills, you know, we should definitely be pushing those people to uh, um, to step their game up. Or educate themselves a yeah, little bit. Yeah, absolutely. The leading workshops, you guys are putting out, not instructors, but leaders for these jumps to go back home and do it safely? Or yeah, I mean, are you do... just leading them on fun shit? No, we're we're teaching people, uh, hopefully, how to lead uh, basic jumps, you know, the, the right. primary components, and then also, you know, when not to lead as well. So um, it's like I could take a course with you and you'd be like, I, I'm not going to sign anyone off. It's not about. Right. It's, it's not, not about, about that. that. But, you, but it mean, is. There's things that we're going to. We're going to. Yeah, we're going to teach you. You know the basics and the 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 primary goals of uh, of leading a skydive. So uh, what are your responsibilities are, what your roles are, some of the common problems, um, some of the options you have for different flight paths, um, mm -hmm. how to handle different situations, what variables make it more or less difficult, which of those variables can you directly control through your planning and things like that. Right. And uh, hopefully make for better leaders out there. That's and uh, the leading workshop's been great. I've really enjoyed teaching it. Um, a big part of it too is, you know, the course is different every single time we do it because it very much depends on who's the flyers, in the course, right? Course. And I've had courses that have all professional coaches in it. Mm -hmm. And then I've had courses that have people that have never led a jump before. And yeah. both are equally valuable because the right. questions you get from the professionals, the questions you get from the people that have just never even done it, sometimes can be really eye-opening of like, that's actually really good insight. Right. Um, and it's important to know that that particular demographic is really who we're trying to impact the most is those, those beginner leaders. Um, so that hopefully they don't have to learn these mistakes the hard way through right. close calls or incidents Video and things debriefs, like that, yeah. or, or, or unfortunately seeing things happen and at least get to a point where they again have that discerning eye and in and, and intuition for something's not quite right about this what would you say the most dangerous part of an angle is 
deployment, exit, or building? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, that's a great question. It, it really depends on the, the jump itself. Um, you know, sometimes break off could be the most dangerous part, uh, mm -hmm. as well as approaches tend to be uh, a part of the skydive that I put a big, big emphasis on as well. Right. Um, it depends on what you're doing on the jump too. Every time you add a turn in, you're adding in more difficulty. You're adding in more potential for somebody you to know, get smoked and try to get back ex in. Exactly. So and the more, the the more turns add, you know, add difficulty, things like right. that. Uh, steeper pitches is going to mean more, faster speeds, faster Wobbles, speeds, right. you know, harder to control, uh, more dangerous when people lose control, things like that. So, um, yeah, there's a lot God, of it's a lot going on. There's it, a lot me. going on, yeah. And I uh that's not to that's not to discourage people from getting into it cuz uh I th I think it's it's absolutely worthwhile and it's it is for me it's the purest form of flying that I have found the the, the thing that feels the most like flying and, and how I enjoy flying the most. Um but having said that, you know, I definitely I think we should be uh we should be continuing to explore how we can uh, we can make it even cleaner and safer, and when we do that, you know these jumps can only get faster, and you really get to get creative with uh, how you're exploring the space up there when uh, when everyone's on the same page. So when for someone right now listening to you that wants to learn slow speed or high speed, I already know your answer, but slow speed or high speed progression, and why the one over the other. Mm. I mean, if people want to get into this, uh, I just highly recommend flat tracking, you know, tracking that is the equivalent of slow speed, mm -hmm. uh, in the sky, which is going to be just, uh, tracking flat because that's going to teach you the most about where your center of gravity is. It's going to teach you the most about what surface area is actually letting you, uh, fall in a certain direction with a certain speed, um, where the pressure should be on your body and things like that. And, if you find flat tracking boring, then you are missing the entire point. Mm. Because I mean, even when I get to go fly with with you know some of my friends that are really really high level flyers, the majority of the time we get out, we go fast and flat. Oh, really? Because that's where you, that's where you show you know who can who's who's got it right. Okay. Everybody can go steep and fast, but it's just right. like the tunnel, right? When you see some of these guys flying slow speed, and you see them flying the same same way they fly at high speed. It's incredible to watch. Incredible. And it's the same in the sky where, you know, you can go so far, so fast at these flatter speeds that if you're learning in that way, you're really going to be learning the proper technique because then going steeper is just releasing pressure in certain areas. Ex right. Exactly. And, and, and then it makes the whole thing make more sense. And it's going to be so much more controlled from the very beginning versus just learning how to fall. And then, right. and then start to try and make adjustments from there. That's what it is. Control, not falling. Oh, hey, yo, Facebook, thanks for checking us out. The whole podcast will be out in like two weeks, three weeks. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, all that stuff. Much love. Wazzy Circus Radio. Hit us up on Patreon. Keep your head on a swivel and hook that shit, son. Peace. <laughs> Bye, guys. Yeah, man. So when I... Was it was still San Marcos days, and this was going on. We were always going from a vertical to a movement because we'd already have already have the speed, sure, and it was like easier. Mm -hmm. But now I'd rather go from the flat to the yeah, steep because absolutely. it's just, especially for the learning purpose, right? Right, going from steep to to tracking is is great if that's if that's the plan and everyone can do it well and things like that. I mean, that's right. that's a totally great plan, you know. But if you're training and you're trying to learn how to fly these kind of skydives learning how to track on the flatter side is just going to be so much more useful for your your long-term progression right. than for instance going from straight down to then trying to move from there because there's just no way you're going to be able to have those fine minute oh, uh, no. kind of you know oh, feelings no. and sensations that are going to control your pitch and speed and things like that so yeah, i was just happy to be there and we were going fast right <laughs> yeah of like, course yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but a lot of them would just end up vertical they wouldn't even be of course. angle jumps anymore. It's sure. just we're we're in these funny positions, mm -hmm. but we're going straight down, and you can feel it on your head. Yeah, and you know what I mean. And that's the those are the people, and those are the kind of jumps <laughs> that we should be hyper critical of. You yeah, know, exactly. because you know the, those are what, what that's doing is well. Firstly, for learning purposes, it's just not effective at all. And then secondly, right. you know, the real uh, pragmatic side of that is if. 
people are just flying like that, generally they don't know how to flatten out progressively. Oh no! It's and a, so yeah, exactly. So it's, then it's a and death then, drop. And then exactly. So then break off is just a uh, popcorn explosion of so of scary. people going from super steep to super flat with very little control at all or awareness. Yeah, or awareness. And how aware can you be when you're just you know all in that exactly? Space. So. So again, learning the the flat tracking side of things is going to make for safer break offs, you know, better flying ability, and then everything in between is going to get so much easier because you feel so much more, you know, uh, capable at those those flatter speeds. Like this guy in the orange we're watching here, this is a uh, Tane from Australia who's a absolute mega flyer man uh, in the in the tunnel and in the sky, and uh, you can see his technique there is is. You know, he just has so much awareness of the pressure on his legs. Uh -huh. You know how much weight he has towards his head. I mean, it's it's. He was solid, yeah. Yeah. So I so going back to your sports background, um, we were talking about the control. Low speed gives you control, right? Because if not, you fall. Sure. Right. High speed, you can fall and still make it look good, mm -hmm. right? How much does your fitness? Because you guys do a lot of yoga, mm -hmm. right? You do a lot of working out. Yeah. And you could tell in your body position you don't even it's like there's no wind you're mm. solid and so was homeboy so how much does the physical aspect come into this i mean it definitely it definitely plays a big part so you don't need to be an elite athlete to be a good skydiver or flyer but having said that i don't see many of the elite flyers that aren't in good shape either um so and there's different versions of being in good shape you know i think there's different body types there's different natural you know, mobility and awareness that, that some people have for me with my sports background, you know, I have, I have a way that of working out that I know just feels the best for me, durability wise, flexibility wise, um, you know, the longevity in the sport is a big reason for why I exercise as much as it is so that I can fly better. It's so that I can continue doing this for a long time. You know, right. um, I'm pretty fortunate that I've been in and out of tunnels for, over 10 years now 11 years now. yeah and uh i haven't had a so shoulder surgery you know and things like that Should and that's, i need two th that's because i you know I, I spend a lot of time uh warming up before before i get in the tunnel and, and, and things like that that are that are going to make me good for hopefully my body good for a, a long time as opposed to you know these little brief moments that uh some people can hit it hard and then it's just well, not there anymore we, right yeah so so I think that it definitely plays a big part, you know. Uh, what's 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 your company? What's the company name you just started? Uh, Airtex Performance. Airtex Performance. Mm -hmm. Do you have any of these workout warm ups on there? Do you, I I don't, but that's a that's a great idea. You should, you know? dude. Yeah. Like this is a. I mean, you. Do, how big is this camp? Uh, today, uh, this coming week we have five participants, so it'll be a twenty hour camp. And last week. Five participants. It was twenty hours. 20 so hours. this is forty hours in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. You're in the wind, bro. Yeah. So definitely. your techniques would be very valuable to people because it's not like somebody just, you know, all the shit they always have at, at the old corporate of people like stretching. Right. It's none of that. Right. I mean, the beautiful part of what we're doing uh, is this tunnel retreat yeah. last week and this week uh, that I host with uh, with my girlfriend uh, Alethea. Shout uh, out to the queen. <laughs> yeah, and, and talk about that a little bit too. Yeah. So the the tunnel retreat it really does combine all these things. So it's, it's more than just a tunnel camp where you're showing up and you're flying your time throughout the day. Uh, Alethea runs a yoga session and she's a, you know, a, a very long time practitioner and teacher of yoga. So she teaches, uh, teaches yoga to people that some of them have never even done yoga and some are, are very experienced, uh, uh, yogis. And then she also runs a meditation session later in the day, right before we come to fly that is centered on, you know, a mindset and mentality for, for flying. So, awesome. you know, we're, yeah. So, and so she, and she's nourishing the body throughout the day by, uh, she caters food for it. She cooks food right. for the entire group throughout the day. So every meal throughout the day is, is cooked, uh, for you and it's all healthy. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a fully immersive, um, sort of concept event that we've come up with. So How do they find you on that? How do people find you for this? We have tunnel wellness retreats on Facebook, which is a, a private group that you can join. And there, there we post our, our dates and things like that. And then if you follow Alethea or I on any of our social media, we always post her, our upcoming dates. Yeah, this is, this is like, this is very Wazi Circus style, but more of a holistic. See, instead of like, uh. The vegan food and, and, and the the uh, 
the yoga. Mm-hmm. We get to get we hit dispensaries and get bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to each his own, you know. <laughs> kind of running around and do yeah. parachute stuff. I mean, you know, I I, I can't say that I've been, I've been a, I haven't been above it, you know. Like, <laughs> but it's still, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Going yeah. On. No, but that's fucking amazing. And like I was telling you before the show, okay, I know Martin Dedick was on the show last week. He does do sky camps and tunnel camps, and mm-hmm. he's from Europe. He's a badass. You're the equivalent here, because you're nobody else does both. I mean, I can't think of many that do both still, not on a level like this, mm. you know, as a full time thing. I know some tunnel guys that do go to boogies, sure, right. And I know some skydivers that do host camps sometimes, but not like this, mm. right. And then with the retreat, the meditation, the food, the wellness, the calmness, right. You know what I mean? Like it's really cool. It's a it's a really really special concept event, and. Um... Yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with with the direction it's gone. I'm so grateful to to partner up with Alethea, who is, you know, really something special when it comes to to this sort of hosting this sort of and creating this sort of atmosphere and energy and the experience that she creates for people um, through her yoga meditation. Just just her overall man, she really knows how to curate and and right. create uh, an atmosphere that is just so open and focused as well because she really gets the flying aspect of course because she's That's also what I'm saying, a full-time she's skydiver. also a fucking badass so it's not like she's just some girl that tags along hmm. that does massages and yoga and watches her boyfriend fly Definitely that not. is not what's happening no that's it's her a, right there probably leading some shit you yeah, know that like, is her right there yeah, yeah she's straight boss mode son yeah. yep that's her right there yeah. white helmet totally look at her pinned out dog <laughs> Right, that's your host, Playa. That's sick, yeah, man. Yeah. And, you and, know, and the the meditations she she holds that Ooh. is oftentimes like really centered around people's mindsets uh, and mentality for flying. I mean, it's just been it's been great. You know, uh, it's hard for me to imagine coaching in the tunnel right now after doing that for over a year right with without all the programs because it's such a fully immersive thing that you know the other thing is the the participants themselves feel like a team and they are a team they are a team right so no no matter what skill level they're at now they have this support system for the entire week through each other you know that they feed off each other's energy uh in and out of the tunnel and helps regulate everybody's energy you know so if somebody has a bad session it's you know it's always balanced out with someone who's uh who's finally having a breakthrough and things like that and and there's hugs and high fives yeah it's it's more of a collective experience and and i think that that that's really nice too, because that's something that goes missing a lot of times, especially in the tunnel, is this kind of this team atmosphere, which can be a really a really strong force, of course. And a lot of camps are people from all over the place that don't know each other, and you see it on other camps, mm-hmm. like when they're not flying, they're on their phone, not paying attention, doing other things. Right. Well, your camp, everybody's involved. They're all rooting for each other. They're watching. Everybody's learning. I'm yeah. watching. Everybody's watching. Yeah, it's you a know? fully immersive week. I mean, they're they're spending time with each other. They're eating every meal together. Um, yeah. You know, when we come out of the tunnel, we're discussing what we just did, of course, and then you know people are able to kick around ideas. Maybe we're talking about skydiving. Maybe we're talking about, you know, tunnel flying philosophy stuff. You know, I mean, it's it's all over the place. And you have a different philosophy. So American coaches, from what I've seen the last six, seven months, we have this muscle car approach. Everything's fast, go, get the money, two-minute rotations, get out, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the more European style with, with slow, low speed, get it right before we move on, right? Do it again, hold that shit, yeah. fucking fight for it. It's I, not easy, it's, and the wind is down. Yeah, and I and I I do that, but I I also I just want to make sure that my students can see how this translates to their skydiving because right, okay. hopefully people are coming to me as a as a tunnel instructor or a tunnel coach not not because I'm the best tunnel coach in the world I, d- I definitely know that I'm not um, but I hope that they can see once they're done working with me, how this is going to directly translate to their flying in the sky. Because the majority of my students are, are skydivers sky right. and, not, and not tunnel rats and have no intention of being tunnel rats. Right. So even though I'm, I'm using a style like the slow speed style, um, I want them to see how this is going to translate 
to their their flying in the sky. So I spend a lot of time making sure that they understand the reason we're spending so much time on this particular thing is because, well, I need you to know where your center of gravity is so you can feel it in the sky. So when we do those pitch so changes pitch, or yeah, exactly. we flatten out through our feet or you know, those things that you're 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 already building in those that muscle memory, you're already building in those sensations here in the tunnel. Um, so that's that's where I put a lot of my focus uh, on my coaching. What was your canopy regression? Stupid. <laughs> uh, you you know, started where? I was, you know, for, Lexington. Yeah, for as uh, <laughs> as harsh as I would probably be on on, oh, you, on some students, people, yeah. You know, it's, uh, but we were definitely the blind leading the blind uh -huh. there in Lexington, and I, I think I was on a stiletto one thirty five at like. 50 jumps. I'm sure. I know you You probably didn't have 100 jumps when you tried to jump with me. No, I definitely did not. I, I, did, I didn't I even think, own my own gear. Yeah, I think you know? I remember you were borrowing the I camera. Was borrow, I was borrowing And you had gear. never really done it, and they're like, Cindy said he's going to film this tandem. <laughs> and she had done that to me a couple times. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna throw anybody under the bus, but it was a uh, wild west, man. Yeah, she used to do that it to was, me all the time. It was something else. She made me. She's like, "All right, this is his first um, AFF. He's gonna wear a camera. This one student. He's gonna wear a fucking GoPro so he can have it." I was like, "No, he's not." I mean, I had a GoPro on uh, my third jump, so yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't even my idea. Uh, I remember one of her can. I it was it fucking Matt. I forget who it was, but they were coming in so hot. I turned me and the tandem away from him, and he just hit our feet. Come on. Oh Ow. You could just feel camera and shit on our ankles. I was like, this fucking sucks. And then you'd have a malfunction. Crazy. The fucking canopy wouldn't open. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a, yeah, you know, it's one it of those places fun. that gave, gave you a broad perspective of the, my favorite drop you know, zone the, on the, the planet. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the type of skydiving that's out there. Um, when did you start hooking it? God damn it. Back in the day, like quick, huh? Um, no, I actually took. I, I did take quite a while to start learning bigger turns. So I, I think I started to learn bigger turns on a Crossfire 2. And that okay. was probably like a 119 or something like that. Was that was I, San Marcos days. Um, no, that would have been Houston. I probably okay. had a few hundred jumps at that point. Okay. Before I ever started doing 270s. Um, or even aggressive 90s and things like that. So I was a, I was a really conservative canopy pilot. Uh, not in my progression, that was kind of dumb, but it was, right. it was a little bit more forced because people were selling me stuff Something and I had yeah, no money right. exactly. and I was making eight bucks an hour at the yep. tunnel, you know? So yep. it was like, somebody offers you a canopy and it's like, if it works, you know? <laughs> oh dude, I've done yeah. it, dude. Yeah. So not, not the best way of doing it, but, um, you know, luckily I survived and luckily I had enough sense to take it easy because I, uh -huh. I definitely knew that I didn't know. So that was right. the that was my saving oh, grace. That is a that saving was, grace. That was my saving grace was that I was probably overly conservative on those canopies for a long time because I realized I was not anywhere near the pilot that I should be uh, for that style of canopy. And now you're under the Valk. Now I'm on a Valkyrie, and uh, yeah, I love it. It's what What's, what a wing that is. That I've heard. It's the, but what about the layers, the Petras, the Slayers, the I, great canopies? Different, like slightly different uh, characteristics to each. But uh -huh. for me, I I love my Valkyrie. I love uh, I love the way it dives. I love the uh, I love the pressure on the rears. I love the range of it. And uh, you know, for me, it's it's going to be my wing for, for what, quite some time. What size is it? It's a seventy five. I need to get a new parachute. So, <laughs> okay. Um, I know we were going long, Mom. We gotta, we've got to do something. I know I saw them. They're gonna fucking die. Uh, what's that? Let's, let's, let's. It's a Friday freakout. It's a tracking video. Mm. This is what prompted me to like, do we got to get on the show and talk about? Oh, okay. This. this is the one that was. Uh, I had a chat about on my yeah. coach's page the other day. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It would be cat, uh, in the middle, babe. Right there. And this is, all right, so this is uh, Friday Freak Out, Close Call Canopy Collision on Sketchy Angle Jump. And it's, it's just dumb from start to finish. It is, but on the other hand, it's just some, I, I don't know, what drop zone is it? This is Skydive Spain. Okay. Is it a smaller drop zone or is it a larger drop no, zone? No, it's, it's a, quite a big drop zone. Because it looks like they're just trying to have fun really bad, but they don't know what they're doing. That would pretty much represent a large am amount of the jumps at that particular drop zone. like he is he the lead yeah that's the lead on the jump or yeah, is he just who, who looks like he's learning how to track he, on his belly he watched a video and he's just holding some shit he saw and on he video. is he's doing i don't even 
God knows how many turns here. Well, uh, yeah, there's you know, no, the, there's no, he do, he's orbiting. Three 360s, maybe. Yeah, so he's, he's just, not going to straight He's doing the old toilet bowl. Um, look, and, oh! And, uh, as you can see, look, like, and they're toilet bowling. You know, yeah, there's at least four people on the jump that we know of. Maybe maybe oh. five, actually. Yeah, five oh, on the jump. God. And people are everywhere. It's this it's basically straight it's basically straight down at the end. Um, they all track off the same fucking direction. Yeah. Which at that particular drop zone, you're not supposed to track to the south where they're tracking towards. So I think he probably, I mean, just go, it's just another example of how little awareness he had on where he was navigating. Parachute dumps then, and oh, 10 feet I mean, in front of him, another canopy had deployed that yeah, never the, saw him because yeah, he was below and him. And who knows where that guy came from. So yeah, because those three took off to the right. He turned left. Yeah. So that guy was fucking not even. And and I think I think they describe it in the details because I, I, you haven't even seen that jumper for quite some time, apparently. And he just got completely burned on the skydive and kind of left early and then probably didn't track super hard and oh, then wasn't geez. didn't keep the rest of the group in there, uh, in, in, you know, where he could uh, see them. So, so, yeah, let's so, talk but, about that. But as, as much as we're criticizing the – the jumpers involved in the the, the close call there, I, you know, I put the focus on when we had this discussion in my my coaching page on on Facebook, and that is just why in the world what, did this jump happen in the first place? I mean, it should have been a two way. Yeah, I mean, this first off, uh, that amount of turns is just absurd. So it's a well, that wasn't a, on purpose. It's a terrible plan. That wasn't on purpose. Right. That so dude this, was not so in that control. That person should not have been leading in the first place. He wasn't looking where he was going. If you look, he was probably looking at his knees. Yeah. It didn't look like he was aware of where he was at. So right. the, the toilet bowling was just him trying to he was looking at his buddy. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been. And even if it even if it was perfectly planned and that's exactly what he said he was gonna do, it's a dumb, dumb plan. It's a dumb plan. And and with that that group skill level, obviously he didn't have the ability to to make a good decision of these people shouldn't be on this skydive. He went super steep. He clearly doesn't have enough control and awareness to keep the group tight. There's no way he knows where anybody on that jump is. No. When you're doing that many turns, you're creating such an opportunity for a head-on collision. I mean, as we saw that one person zoom by before the before the close call under canopy. I mean, there's just a uh, there's there's so many variables there that that should be eliminated ahead of time that that were not, and it's uh it's a it's a pretty blatant example of you know. The the other thing is I would like to say that this sort of mistake is uh, because it's so absurd doesn't happen all the time but unfortunately there's plenty of no, drop zones sure around where, where this like is that. this is going on all the time and I I actually immersed myself with this this drop zone for for a bit um, uh, when I was spending a lot of time in Europe a few years ago and you, you know I I don't want to call them out because there's there's some really beautiful people there that I that I I really love uh, at that drop zone. But having said that, there there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of big fish, little pond syndrome mm -hmm. there where mm -hmm. they're not willing to to update their their skill sets. Yeah, and 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 the culture there, it doesn't really allow for outside influence to point out mm -hmm. how egregious these errors are, you know, and how how much this is preventable you know so the guy doing it is probably the guy that says that that's how it goes yeah or or he's surrounded by people that you know would never call him out on that or would mm. never never point that out and how many times he's done that exact jump and because nobody had a close call no one talked about it and it was totally acceptable right, right? right. so that's the other problem is like this is he's probably fully you know uh this this leader is fully convinced that this is an okay jump he's because he, he's done it a hundred times already right <laughs> and and now this happens and then suddenly you know everyone's telling him how how stupid this is and or maybe not maybe everyone like it on my coaching page was focused on you know the jumpers involved that were had a close call and it's like well you know the point i made was beginner skydivers you know these are these are beginner flyers these are beginner yeah. angle flyers uh, beginner angle flyers are going to fly like beginner angle flyers. Right. So they that did. That wasn't even angle. That person tracked. Yeah. By. This is just. This is just. They're flying to exactly their level. You right. know. So to take them on a skydive like this and this happens is completely the on the, the leader lead. because it is because they flew to exactly their level. They did mm -hmm. exactly what I would expect them to do as people that are incapable of staying with a with a skydive and following a, a, a jump like that. Right. So exactly what you would expect happened, if not, you know, a, a better case scenario, frankly. So that's the chasm I'm talking about. It's mm -hmm. that, and then it's fly for life. 
Yeah. Right? And in between, there's a lot of that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's true. But how do sure. guys know better? If you're at the Oklahoma Skydive Center yeah. or you're in Kansas at fucking Huckadoo's fucking place yeah. and you guys want to go do that, yeah. What else do you do? I mean, how do you? Where do you find the information? That's why we need the text. What is it? The what is? What's your what's your website again? <laughs> AirTextPerformance. Air AirTextPerformance. Because I, if not, there's no information. Yeah. So. Or there is, and I just don't know about it. So I teach the leading workshop, and that's that's separate of of, of my company. But mm -hmm. uh, but I also do with through AirText. Uh, I do consulting for drop zones to teach drop zone managers and owners and safety uh, officers what what to look for. You know, so that they can spot these sort of things on the ground as well, because there should be rules and policies in place that, you know, influence uh, these sort of jumps not happening in the first place. And if it's not rules and policies, perhaps it's a, a broader culture of education and accountability um, that the that the drop zone creates, not necessarily even through rules, but just maybe the drop zone by bringing in consultants or, yeah, or right. coach outside coaches and things like that are going to help you know, uh, invest in their fun jumper community. So that's a safer community, um, as it goes on. Yeah, man. Fuck. So what do you see the future of skydiving? Mm. I mean, I think that we're going to continue exploring, uh, in free fall, we're going to continue exploring, uh, space within the group. Um, so that's what I spent a lot of time with last year, uh, flying and you'll see it in that, that, that 30 minute video. We're now, you know, when we're flocking and angle flying, it used to just be the, the coolest thing you could do is fly super, super tight and super, super fast. And that right. will always be, you know, the bread and butter, of course, of angle flying. But I think it's learning how to explore space within the group. So create distance within the group and bring it back together and create distance and add this thing breeze. Yeah, so I that, saw you do that a couple of times. Yeah. Jumps. Yeah. So that we can kind of start to feel these groups, you know, intentionally get farther apart, which is going to obviously, you know, it brings a lot of risk and things like that too. Right. So it has to be really controlled in the way that we teach that and, and build towards that. But I think that that's going to be for this style of jumping. I, I would, I would like to think that that's probably going to be the direction we're going to go in the future. And then I think the next big thing is going to be some giant leaps in technology. You know, I think canopy flocking is getting really super popular. XR, right. XRW is becoming more and more, yeah. you know, common. common. Um, so there's things, there's disciplines that like nuts, that that dude. are going to, that are going to step up and, and become safer. Cause XRW too has just been as cool as it is. Some of the gnarliest things I've ever seen have happened on XRW jumps too. So, right. You know, that's another discipline that's evolving very, very quickly and being, you know, finally being able to taught, uh, be, be taught in a, a much more, you know, uh, safe environment. That shit is dope when they it hook up and spiral super, together yeah. and shit. Yo, remember that video you did where you got out of the plane and you're trying to get as flat as possible yeah. while, uh, who was that? Guru. Oh, Guru was on the fucking, uh -huh. what was he under? He was under his, uh, Peregrine. Yeah, and he was he was okay. So he's spiraling down. Tex yeah. leaves the plane and he's belly carving, and you almost match his fucking speed. For a second, I did. Um, you know, I wanted to do it really slick. I wanted to do it in shorts, but I believe that if I did it in uh, jeans and you know a, a long sleeve shirt or something like that, I I think I could stay with him for for quite a bit. But I will say that. You know, we only did it two or three times, and uh, that was the closest one I got, and the best video we got of it. Uh, but man, when he threw that wing around, I could see I could see the individual stitches on his top skin because there was white stitching on the on the uh -huh. black uh, top skin, and it was wild, man. And those lines are coming at you, and those uh -huh. I mean those are razor blades. They, right, they'll just slice you in half. Like so he's in free fall with a cannon. Man, I was. Woo! I mean, you see it on the video. You know, yeah, when, I, when I when I when I changed my heading real quick, it was like it was it was pretty wild. It was pretty wild. Could please, you please, no one go try do that because that because that, that, that can't be steel if it yeah, hits you. We, uh, Razor blades. Oh yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna slice you in half like a chainsaw. Fucking crazy. It, but it was uh it was a uh, it was a hell of an experience, and I would definitely like another try at it at at some point. Um, because we we really planned it out and we thought thought it through, and I think there's a few things that we we would do even better this time, including, you know, I'd probably lose the ego a little bit and put some pants on. Yeah. <laughs> do a little, stay with it a little more. All right, man. I know this is going long. The PIA Symposium, you're speaking in a month. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, a week. A, a week, week and a half. Yeah. Next. That's big time. What's going Thanks. down? Um yeah, just uh, I was inspired to to give a speech there, kind of based on some of the consulting I've been doing for Drop Zone. So I'm going to be in the the I think it's called Government and Management uh, Ballroom there mm -hmm. at, at PIA, and this will be I'll be focusing on speaking to 
you know, the management and drop zone owners and, and safety officer side uh, of the discussion of how we can make angle flying safer at our drop zones. So a lot of the things that we've talked about here, we're going to talk about in that speech. And I'm, I'm just going to look at it from a from a drop zone perspective, not even just educating the fun jumpers, because that's what I do, you know, on the side. And that's right. what I do primarily. But but with the drop zones themselves, like what uh, what protocols, what policies, rules, you know, and there's long term education projects uh, can we have in place to make our drop zones safer for movement skydiving? Fucking a lot on your plate, Jesse. That's it's good, man. It's good to be busy. It is good, yeah. man. Yeah. All right. How do people find you? Um, text out fly on Instagram is where I, I'll post a lot of the videos and things like that. Yes. Um, tunnel wellness retreats tunnel. on Facebook is uh, where we post our dates uh, and news for upcoming uh, tunnel retreats. And airtexperformance.com is my website. And beyond just consulting work, uh, I offer offer. Uh, mentorship programs as well for you know up and coming flyers and coaches who you know have a vision and uh, you know I work with them to create action plans and uh, kind of see where in their skill set they need to uh, kind of fill in the blanks a little bit. So if you're if you're looking to take that next step as a as a flyer or or a professional coach and uh, you would like some mentorship in those areas, uh, I offer that as well. Take it from the best, motfuckers. Come and get it, son. Jesse, you're the man. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me, brother. Oh, so, so, me so, so good to see you always, bro. Yeah, man. Really. Mad love. Wazzy Circus Radio. Hook that shit. Man, I wish we had the video for the Billy, because we could have actually had this story back. We have it next time we see more. That's dope, man. And that kiss is God's gift to mankind, because men fly. With the kids and the wise, it ain't easy, just try. Heels down, knees wide, lean back, arms out, chin up, now smile, and be sure you can fly.